So in the opening ceremony, we had this song, I allow, I surrender, I feel so grateful to receive. And I know lots of us were quite kind of moved by those words. There was a sort of sense of, a, it felt like there was a sense of ownership of those words. Um, and I've sung that song before, and every time I've sung it in a group of people, there's a sense of like a heart connection to those words. And I think particularly to the words, I surrender, there's something there that we respond to. Um, so I wanted to explore this a little bit because this is something that's been coming up in my own sort of practice as a concept. Um, so we say, you know, I surrender, but what, what does that really mean? What does it mean to surrender? So I was asked to give this talk to talk about my own response to the theme, which is the dance of life and death. And, uh, and this word surrender came up for me because I was thinking about how, how I approach the idea of dancing in this dance of life and death. And I imagine that there's quite a few of you who have a similar response to life that I do, which is that, um, so I might think, okay, this is a dance of life and death. Okay, right, right, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to get some dance shoes. It's gonna be really important I've got the right shoes because, you know, if I'm dancing, I'm dancing for a long time. You know, I need to get it right. I need to, so I need to go get the right shoes. I really need to think about this. I need to think about the steps that I'm taking. So I need to make sure I'm moving in the right way. So there's a sense of control coming on already here. It's like, I want to control the dance. I want to make sure I get it right. I don't take bad steps. I've got the right gear on, you know, and doing it in a particular kind of a way. So there's a sense that with life, I'm approaching life in some ways. I'm trying to make it neat for myself. I'm trying to put it in a box. If I do that, if I get this job, if I move there, if I act in this certain way, it will be okay. I can control it. I can make it safe for myself. Um, and along with that notion of control comes the second thing, which is effort. You know, if I work hard enough at the dance, I'll get really good at it. You know. If I work hard enough in the right way, if I read the right books about the dance, then I'll be able to put a lot of effort in and make it okay. And this kind of, I feel like it works to a certain extent, but there's something missing there. So I'm trying to put my life in these sorts of narrow boxes and in this way that makes it okay and makes it safe, but it's not real. It's kind of limited, it's narrow, it's keeping me in a space which is too small. It's small enough for a small self, but it's not big enough for something else. So it's the something else that I want to talk about today, something that is bigger than me or bigger than you. And uh, so the title of my talk is Surrendering to Life, Surrendering to Death. And there's a kind of surrender that has to happen when you want to talk about this thing that is bigger than us because you can't really talk about it. So I've been quite scared about giving this talk because it's something ineffable. It's beyond words, it's beyond concepts, this thing that I'm trying to understand in some way. I think a key to it is the sense that with this control and effort, what's happening is we're resisting. We're resisting our experience. We're pushing something away and that's actually quite painful. So to be in the box, that little tight box, is, is painful, it's uncomfortable. So we need to do this act of surrendering. So I want to explore what surrender is. So for me, I think it's a sense of being with that reality of life and death, being with the dance of life and death. There's a sense of flow to it when we surrender. So whatever is happening, there's a kind of a, an interactive relationship with that that we're going through. So it sounds great, doesn't it? To flow with reality, to be in the flow of life, to dance in the flow of life, it sounds wonderful. But actually it's really, um, it's really risky. You have to be vulnerable to be in the flow of life. You have to take steps that you don't know. You have to take your dance shoes off and stand on rocky ground and try and pivot and you might fall over in front of everybody. And that's scary, isn't it? That's scary to take that kind of a risk. 
So there's a lack of certainty to surrender, which is what keeps us in these boxes. So I think it helps us to understand, well, what exactly are we trying to surrender to? You know, is there something bigger than us that we can surrender to? And it's this sense of the ego, the ego is, is not helpful to us, it keeps us small in, in our boxes. But there is something bigger, and I don't know how to talk about it exactly, but I'm going to have a go. <laughs> I would say it's something uh, that you might call sacred. But some of you won't like that word. Some of you might respond to the word divine and others won't. Some people might like God. Some people might, might like energy. Some people might like universal ultimate reality. Light, magic, mystery, bodhisattvas, the Buddha. All of these words kind of point to the same thing, something bigger, expansive. In the Buddhist tradition, the word emptiness is another word for what I'm trying to point to, um, or void. I find emptiness and void are words that I don't particularly resonate with myself, but there are other translations that I find much more helpful, like openness, boundlessness, spaciousness, a sense that what we're trying to surrender to is limitless and it's interdependent. So we're all tied into it, we're in it, we're of it, it's around us, we are it, it's, it's everything, it's all interdependent. So Mary Oliver has a poem called, Where Does the Temple Begin and Where Does It End? I read this poem and I thought, that's what I'm trying to say, but I'm not a poet, so I'm going to let her speak. There are things you can't reach, but you can reach out to them, and all day long, the wind, the bird flying away, the idea of God. And it can keep you as busy as anything else and happier. The snake slides away, the fish jumps like a little lily, out of the water and back in. The goldfinches sing from the unreachable top of the tree. I look, morning to night, I am never done with looking. Looking, I mean not just standing around, but standing around as though with your arms open. And thinking, maybe something will come. Some shining coil of wind or a few leaves from any old tree. They are all in this too. And now I will tell you the truth. Everything in the world comes, at least clo closer and cordially. Like the nibbling tinsel-eyed fish the unlooping snake, like goldfinches, little dolls of gold fluttering around the corner of the sky of God, the blue air. So this sense of um, allowing everything to come closer is what I'm talking about in terms of surrender, standing around as though with your arms open, and I guess with your heart open as well. So the idea of how to surrender, I have some thoughts around that, some things I've been trying to do in my own practice, which is this sense of receptivity. But of course it's beautiful when it's wind and goldfinches and that sort of stuff, but when it's more difficult stuff, it's harder, right? It's harder to be receptive. But it's that sense of being curious that I think, so receptivity is one thing, but being curious even with the difficult stuff so, oh, okay, this is happening. Hmm. This is happening now. This is in my experience now. And I don't like it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, where's that coming from? What can I do with that? And understanding that we have preferences and really preferences are just concepts. We can kind of let them go, but we cling really, really, really tightly to them, you know? So I had that, you know, when doing this talk, it's like, I really wanted to sit down. I had a preference to sit down. I didn't want to stand up. I want to sit down low on the ground on cushions and someone else wants to stand up and we've gone for the middle ground of a stable chair, so that's good. But I, was, I noticed that was my preference and actually it, it was quite sort of discombobulating coming in to give a talk and having my preferences, you know, and knowing I was giving a talk about surrender and just noticing that, you know, <laughs> just noticing that. 
I think another way to surrender is uh, to be in the body. So I think we, we overthink this dance of life and death, don't we? Uh, so to come into the body and have a sense of a kind of a deeper intuitive wisdom um, around surrender, yeah. And a, a sense of play and lightness would be another thing. So in the Buddhist tradition we talk about uh, life being like a mirage or a dewdrop or a rainbow, something very, very beautiful but we can't grasp hold of it and it, and it changes and it comes out of being. And these things are light, aren't they? So if we can have a sense of lightness in our lives, uh, if we can surrender by holding onto things very, very lightly and have a sense of playfulness around that. Maybe I should have lied down to give my talk. That would be better. So this is all well and good. So we're surrendering and, you know, it's all lovely and we're being receptive and we're being open and we have a sense of embodiment uh, and maybe also a sense of beauty or gratitude that comes with this idea of surrender. But there comes a point where things are happening in the world that uh, are not right, that we might need to say something about, we might need to uh, take action. You know, so, so when we surrender, you know, we might think, oh, well, that's being a bit of a doormat or a pushover. You know, things need to change. There's stuff to be angry about. You know, there's stuff, that injustices we have to do things about. So how does that work with surrender? So my thinking on this is that um, we don't have that much choice in our lives. We have this complicated web of conditions where actually our choices are very, very limited. We think that we can control this stance, but actually there's a lot we can't control. But the choices we can make need to come from a positive place, so a place of ethical action. But if that comes from the ego, the small self, the self in a box, it's not going to work. We're not really going to be in communication with people in the way that's helpful. So when we surrender in our taking action, we're surrendering to this bigger sense of the world. So we're not coming from the ego, we're surrendering into something from a bigger perspective. So it's though you can be held by something. So your arms are open to the universe or God or the divine or Buddha or whatever you want to call it, Dharmakaya. Your arms are open and you're receptive and those and the universe or God or this thing I can't really talk about is holding you as well. So its arms are open and your arms and its arms are really the same thing. And from that perspective, we can make ethical choices. From that perspective, it's a perspective of love. It's a perspective of heart. It's a perspective of communication and connection. And that's where we can realize we're not becoming a doormat. We're really being held in a pose of surrender. And then I was also thinking about, okay, this is fine for life, but what happens when it comes to death? You know, so I put surrendering to death in my, my talk title and I was thinking, that's quite a hard thing to do, isn't it? To surrender to death. I'm not an expert in death. I haven't had a huge amount of loss in my life. But I do know that when I think about my own death, there's kind of a freedom in some sense when I remember that I'm not going to be here in you know 100 years time we'll none of us will be here you know when I think about that there's a sense of expansiveness it's the same thing as a surrender when I let that be it becomes really important what I do now so surrendering now is really important for surrendering at death so this reflection on death gives more of a sense of flow, that life is a process, a process of surrendering. And there's an urgency when we think of this empty room, you know, with all of us gone, there's a sense that we need to start now and we need to start here, this process of opening ourselves up to what is bigger than ourselves. Thank you.